Elden Ring's arsenal is huge, and there's some strange stuff in it. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 20 weirdest weapons in Elden Ring. Starting off at number 20 is the Ringed Finger. Found hidden deep in Galmir Cave's hero grave past a literal lake of lava, this thing is exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant finger covered in rings. You even hold it by its broken bone, and it's kind of an all-around grotesque weapon that's almost comical in how weird it is. Just the fact that it's a giant purple finger you use as a weapon is odd enough, but to really put this weapon over the top, you can use a special ability to perform a finger flick, where the finger suddenly grows in size and flicks. The animation, I think, is probably what makes it one of the all-time great weird weapons. And number 19 is the Envoy's Great Horn. One of the weirder enemies in Elden Ring are the Oracle Envoys, which, I mean, you're looking at them. You can see them. They're, they're weird. Their weapons are suitably weird to match their appearance, too, and the strangest one of all has to be the Envoy's Great Horn, which is just a massive horn of some kind that you can use to bludgeon people with. Its skill is just as strange, too. You can use the horn to blow big magic bubbles that slowly track enemies, and yeah, it's a deadlier version of a toy bubble blower, and... I don't think you can call that anything other than weird. And number 18 is the Visage Shield and the One-Eyed Shield. I'm putting these together because they're pretty similar, both in design and function. Uh, they're both shields, obviously, that also double as siege weapons, and they've got these grotesque face designs on them. They also both have crap coming out of their mouths, uh, which isn't great. The Visage Shield can create a continuous flamethrower that you use while shielded, and the One-Eyed Shield has an actual cannon you can fire at enemies, so they both have really strange attacks that also aren't that useful, but really fun to mess around with. And number 17 is the Magma Whip Candlestick. Another one where all you need to do is see it. It's a candlestick that creates whips of magma when you swing it, which I, I don't know what to make of, frankly. Its special ability, Sea of Magma, has you swinging it over your head to cover the ground around you in burning lava, which is uh, pretty metal looking, if nothing else. It's a bizarre weapon that requires no explanation because there isn't an explanation. It, it, it's a candle that makes magma. And number 16 is the Grafting Dragon. Attained from the remembrance of Godfrey the Grafted, the weapon is... Uh, I mean, look at it. It's a dragon head that you can punch with. What makes it even better is you can basically recreate Godfrey's special move with it as well, where it breathes fire and shoots out a bunch of flaming rocks and an arch in front of it. The best part's the animation, by far, where the dragon actually spreads its wings and opens its mouth more to attack, like it's still alive or something. I guess it's supposed to be grafted, even though it looks more like it's just kind of resting on your hand instead. Still, it's a dragon head that you can punch with. That's weird, but also badass. And number 15 is the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. It's always kind of funny when these games have you use like mundane objects as weapons. And this one is no different. It's just a big standing torch with legs and everything. And for some reason, you swing it around as a weapon. But if you take a closer look at it, you'll notice something particularly weird. It's actually supposed to be a guy's head impaled on a spike. It's definitely something, but what really puts this weapon on the list is its description. So uh, follow along with me here. This guy got so pissed off about how lazy his fellow monks were that he cut off his own head to use as a candlestick. Sure thing, buddy. And number 14 is the Bastard Star. This weapon is something you can get from the remembrance of Astol, natural born of the void. And being one of the weirdest bosses in the game, it's no surprise the weapon you get from them is also pretty weird. It's a flail that's made out of some kind of bone joint and what looks like tiny little planets with rings and everything. Like most boss weapons, you can also use it to recreate one of their more annoying attacks where it would generate this weird star field in the air that eventually explodes. It's a flail that instead of swinging around a lump of iron, you swing around entire planets and... I don't know if you need to say anything beyond that. And number 13 is the Jellyfish Shield, which, as a shield made from a jellyfish, you'd think would be pretty terrible, but no, it actually can block all physical damage and its magic defense is pretty good as well. Its special ability isn't the most interesting, other than the fact that it turns red like spirit jellyfish do when they get mad. 
but otherwise just a weird shield that sounds useless, but actually is pretty good. At number 12 is Nox Flowing Weapons. I'm going to combine both of them into one entry because they're weird for the same reason, essentially. There's a Nox Flowing Sword and a Nox Flowing Hammer. So while normally they're just kind of weird looking weapons, if you use their special ability, they become significantly stranger. Called the Flowing Form, the attack has the weapons stretch, basically becoming whips so they can hit a much wider area. Uh, apparently, these weapons are made of liquid metal that allows them to transform. Other than that, they'd just be pretty standard, kinda odd looking weapons, but their special ability makes them stand out a lot. And number 11 is the Cypher Pata, the Coated Sword, and the Golden Order Great Sword. These are three weapons on one point. Again, because they're all weird for a very similar reason. They're basically lightsabers. Instead of being swords of pure energy, they're more like magic runes or codes, and they have no physical presence aside from the coded sword's hilt, and they also require a lot of points and faith to actually use. Uh, but how do they actually work? How are you actually even holding them? Like, who really knows? They're mysterious as hell, and they're very closely tied to the Elden Ring itself. So whatever they are, they're clearly powerful Powerful, very unique, and cool as hell. And number 10, the Family Heads. A weapon you get off a guy named Necromancer Garrus, and yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. They're heads that were made to resemble those of his wife and children. It's a, a flail with, I mean, heads that are modeled after his wife and two children. So it kind of just looks like decapitated heads, but they're, they're made as tribute, so I guess they're not, like, directly morbid, but they look pretty morbid. To make the whole thing even darker, the weapon's special ability is called Familiar Rancor, which is described as the anguish of a spouse and children invites accursed wrath. So if you ever wanted to use the heads of a dead family as a weapon, here you go. It's creepy, but you can. And number nine is the Blasphemous Blade, another boss weapon. This weapon you get from the old snake face himself, Rikard. This weapon definitely looks like a proper blasphemous thing. The entire surface of the blade is covered in what looks like writhing bodies of the damned. Like, they don't even stop moving. They just continue. And having the blade appear smaller when you use it somehow makes it creepier. We're putting it on this list based on looks alone. Its special attack's pretty powerful, but nothing too crazy, especially in comparison to everything else on this list. It just looks truly evil, and that really sells it as a weapon that's weird as hell. At number eight is Ant Skull Plate, one of the giant mutated ants heads that you can use as a shield. Uh, giant ants, kind of strange. Armored mutant ants, getting weirder. But mutant ant head shields, yeah, that makes sense to put on this list, right? It doesn't really have any special abilities other than raising your immunity when you use it, but it is a giant ant head that you use as a shield. We had to at least mention it. And number seven is the Sword of St. Trina and St. Trina's Torch. Two weapons that are weird for one reason, they put enemies to sleep. It's a sword and a torch that can, with their special ability, create a cloud of mist that just puts enemies to sleep, and obviously, easy pickings from there. I mean, that makes them strange enough, but the torch in particular is very weird. It's got a bizarre design, burns bright purple, and I mean, it's a torch that makes people fall asleep. I don't know why it exists, and that makes it perfect for this list. And number six is the Dragon King's Crag Blade, another boss weapon. This one you get from the Dragon Lord in the crumbling firm Azula. Doesn't look all that crazy. It's basically a big thrusting sword made of rock, but its special ability makes it notable. It is called Thundercloud Form, and it transforms you into a literal cloud of red lightning as you fly up in the air and strike down at enemies. It's an extremely badass attack that uses a lot of SP and actually isn't all that effective, but it looks so cool. It's it's worth whipping out at least a few times just to see. Uh, it's stuff like this that makes you feel godlike at the end of Elden Ring, that you can just pull out moves like this one and it's like not even your most effective thing. Yeah. And number five is the Arumi. Another weird ass whip, the Arumi is a sword that for some reason can be coiled like it's a whip and you basically use it like a whip, but it's a sword. Like look at it in act, it's totally un unnatural looking. It doesn't even have an explanation either, you know, like the Nox weapons. It's just a, it's a whip, but it's a sword. Categorically, it's a sword, but you use it like a whip. You could basically go back and forth like that for a long time. That's the essence though.
And number four is the Devourer's Scepter, one of the legendary armaments. This weapon is, well, is the weirdness not obvious here? It's a big bludgeon that looks like a snake eating a skull. That's about all there is to say about this one. It's design oriented. It's not like it does anything particularly strange, but I, look at it. That's a weird weapon. And number three is Giza's Wheel, obtained in the Volcano Manor from an invader. This weapon is some kind of bizarre torture device used to cause severe pain on its victims. On appearances alone, pretty nuts. It's literally a wheel covered in barbed spikes attached to a pole. It's another weapon where the Strangely is really revealed though through its special attack. You spin it up and use it like a medieval chainsaw, which is both hilarious and actually effective against certain enemies. Obviously, we have to mention its resemblance to a certain Bloodborne weapon as well. Uh, Apparently, it's the iconic weapon of the Iron Virgins, according to its description, so sounds like a real party. And number two is the Fingerprint Stone Shield, one of the most obscure shields in the game. This thing can basically be found only in the secret area at the bottom of the subterranean shunning grounds. You have to make a very careful series of jumps falling down the massive shaft at the center of its tomb, all to get a shield that looks like a giant slab with fingerprints on it. Just the fact that the envoys of the gods are apparently disembodied fingers is one of the weirdest things about Elden Ring. So the fact that there's a shield where its defining trait are big fingerprints on it is also very weird. That they made it so hard to get also adds to the strangeness of the whole thing. Is this a shield used to defend against the envoys of the gods? Who knows? And finally, at number one, Marika's Hammer and the Sacred Relic Sword. Both weapons you get from killing the final boss are about as weird as you would hope for. The first, Marika's Hammer, is a shattered hammer held together by some kind of godly magic that happens to be the weapon used to shatter the Elden Ring. You know, the big event that kicked off everything in the game's story. It was also the weapon used by Ragadon as he attempted to repair the ring, so it's kind of an important thing. But the real weirdness is the Sacred Relic Sword, a weapon created from the corpse of Ragadon, or maybe Marika, I don't know. I guess it's both, if that secret message that says Ragadon is Marika is to be believed. Uh, anyway, it's a sword that's made from a god, so it looks like it's literally made of flesh, and you can see what even looks kind of like a rib cage here. It's weird enough on its own, but the fact that it's supposed to be made from the god of this game setting is impressively weird, even for this game. And then, of course, we have to get to this little bonus. Not gonna go into a huge amount of detail, because, frankly, it's pretty simple, but varies both Okay. It's a bouquet of flowers that you use as a weapon for some reason. That's all. I mean, that's literally all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.